Hey, everybody. Welcome into the Fantasy Six Pack Network. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens, and today we are continuing our training camp check-in shows where we are going around to all 32 NFL teams and interviewing a beat writer or reporter on what they've seen or heard at training camp. In this episode, we will be discussing the Detroit Lions, and here helping us do so is Morgan Cannon, who covers the Lions for Pride of Detroit on SB Nation. Morgan, I appreciate you being here on such a busy time of the year. How are you doing, man? Yeah, man. Thanks for the invite. Um, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely getting to be busy, right? I feel like I feel like everyone's yeah. feeling it and it's not even really busy yet. So that's the crazy <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's just, man, football's right around the corner. I know I was watching a lot of preseason games this past weekend. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely in the football mode. Uh, before yeah. we jump into the interview, uh, I want to remind everyone, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. When, so you know when we have a new video that drops, then head on over to fantasy6pack.net slash plans to become an all-access member, where you get access to our award-winning rankings, draft cheat sheets, and F6P Discord, where you get all your custom league questions and advice from anybody on staff, and that's truly the best part about it. And right now, you can also save a little cash by using promo code F6P NFL 24 for 15% off. But without further ado, let's just jump in right into things and let's start with jared goff big big contract this offseason after a tremendous year under ben johnson we know one thing we know about jared goff is he's an indoor cat he likes to play indoors man and that's really where he thrives and they just so happen the lions that have 14 um games inside this year which is just terrific um do mm -hmm. you see jared goff possibly being in the mvp conversation this year and building off that great season he had last year with Ben Johnson um, staying at the helm of the offense. Yeah, man, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dylan, because really, like, that's the big thing with golf. Like, we're going into year four in Detroit, right? You got here in 2021. Everyone knows the story as part of the, the Matthew Stafford trade that shocked the NFL world for a little bit there. So I the numbers, I could see them being MVP worthy. Now, the unknown variables like how crazy is that guy in Kansas City going to go? Mm -hmm. You know, is Joe Burrow going to return to uh, 2022 form? Because that could, you know, obviously he could be in the conversation. There's just so many, like, really top-end guys that I could see, you know, being in that conversation. But with Goff, the name of the game for me with Goff and is comfort, right? Like, he's he's you can tell he's comfortable now. Um, you know, you go to practice, you see it. He just – he's – you mentioned Ben Johnson. Look at this continuity, man. This is rare because we know how much, how often things change in the NFL, you know, and if you look at it, you have Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson, quarterback coach, Mark Brunell. A lot of you older football fans like my age and older are about to have a little, oh, he's he's there. <laughs> uh, Mark Brunell, wide receiver coach, Antoine Randall-L, uh, who the guys love. Remember Antoine Randall-L for the Steelers back in the day? Absolutely, um, yep. But yeah, just there's all that continuity there. He, he definitely has a hand in the pot with the offense. Ben Johnson's very uh, receptive to Goff being like, hey, I like this concept, like especially this down and distance. I'm comfortable with this. You know, he has Frank Ragnow, for my money, one of the best centers in football, if not the best. And he's so he's magnificent with the checks like pre-snap, getting them into the right, you know, uh, the right um, blocking, like just to make sure that everyone's picked up, everyone's accounted for those yeah. uh, those pre-snap checks. So, yeah, and then playing inside definitely helps. I can't lie. I mean, I, I really think that's the case for, like, almost everybody, minus, like, the sure. aliens of the, you know, of the sport but uh, or the guys that are just used to it, like Burroughs, you know. It just – you play outside, you play outside. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Goff's a Cali boy. I'm not – I've gotten past giving him crap for that, you know, because he's uh -huh. definitely <laughs> – <laughs> but, yeah, Goff's definitely a Cali boy. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think he's primed, man, because he, the Lions return so much. You've heard about the offensive line. You got Frank Ragnow, who I mentioned at center, Kevin Zeitler, right guard, who they signed from Baltimore, who's a great, just a, a pro's pro on the interior. Um, you have Graham Glasgow at left guard, and then your bookend tackles, Taylor Decker, just a, a great left tackle, a technician in pra pass protection. And then for my money, the best tackle in football, who's also only 23 years old, Panay Sewell. So Trent Williams has to step aside, man. He got that. Oh, now Trent Williams got all pro last year, but – yeah, Pinay got that first team all pro on the right side. So I was thrilled. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a long, long way of saying I could see it with Goff. 
just some things would have to break his way. And make no mistake yeah. about it, I know we're going to get into it. This is still going to be a team that's going to run that pill, man. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They've really built this team great around Goff. He struggled with protection early in his career, um, struggled with pressure. Like you mentioned, the offensive line is absolutely terrific. They gave him a ton of weapons around him, which we're about ready to get into. Um, let's look at the running backs, though, Morgan. Um, last year, we kind of saw a little bit of a slow burn with Jameer Gibbs kind of getting off to a little bit of, of a slow start and fantasy managers kind of freaking out a little bit with David Montgomery um, getting a bulk load of the work early. But that seemed to flip towards the back half of the season. Um, with both guys healthy heading into the season, how do you see this backfield shaking out? Do you see that so, maybe slow playing Gibbs a little bit more and saving him for the back half of the season? Or do you think it's all systems go for him? I do think they're going to be intentional with how they, you know, divvy out touches just because uh, I think the NFL world got a taste of what Jameer can be last, like towards the end of last season. Uh, it's going yeah. to open up more than that, man. I, I think he is special with a capital S like underscore underscore, like all that. So I, I don't think they're going to slow roll him. I think a lot of that last year was he was swimming in it a little bit. You know, they they were had him take reps. Um, and then I, I was looking for the statistic, but he really didn't play much on third down last year. And I think a lot of that was to do with the fact that they weren't quite comfortable with him in pass pro just yet. Which makes sense. And yep. the responsibilities and like knowing where his eyes need to be, you know, pre-snap and post-snap and all that good stuff. There's so many nuances. So I do think he was swimming in it. And I think that's why they did, you know, slow roll it, like you said, Dylan. But this year, I think that's done with, man. I think he's going to be out there on third down. They're going to get crazy with the personnel. And that's going to be nightmare fuel for defenses because he's tough to deal with, man. His feet are some of the prettiest in the game. Like he routinely makes really good athletes look really stupid in space. Mm -hmm. uh, he's tougher, way tougher than we gave him credit for, me included. Like he finished a lot of runs last year with some like, okay, young man, I didn't really know you had that right. in you, but you you stuck your note like and or like just finishing a run out of bounds. He had that one where he just slammed Antoine Winfield on that touchdown in the divisional round. I was like, that was really disrespectful. That was where we sat <laughs> after a season ticket. So, but yeah, I do think I think Jameer's primed, man. Um, I, I don't think there's gonna be any slow playing. I remember that era too when the fantasy football people were getting mad. I'm like, just wait, it's gonna come. But uh, yeah, I think he's going to go crazy. And I don't want to forget about David Montgomery, man. It's one of my favorite players. He's just, he's like a prototype running back, just a ball of yeah. knives back there, like thick thighs, just powerfully built. Like he's so hard to tackle on first contact and he's deceptively fast. So mm -hmm. I think there's a reason a lot of people think the Lions have one of the best uh, running back rooms in football. And it starts with those two for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a Bears fan, so I know all about David Montgomery. He's just yep. tough. <laughs> He's a Dan Campbell guy for sure. And Definitely. I like targeting both of these running backs in fantasy. Like you said, they're going to absolutely run the pill still. So, um, mm -hmm. But looking at the wide receivers, we know who Amon Ross St. Brown is. The guy is incredible. I, me personally, I actually think he has the upside to finish as the wide receiver one overall in fantasy football. And people are kind of side-eyeing me a little bit. But the man, he sees volume. He's great after the catch. Uh, absolutely love that guy. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Jamison Williams and what you think his potential breakout is this year with Josh Josh Reynolds moving on to Denver, who at times we saw last year was a decent part of the Lions offense. How do you see uh, J-Mo's season shaking out here? Yeah, um, and to your credit too, I saw that. I was like wondering if that was a Bengals blanket or a Bears blanket behind you, but yeah, <laughs> um, I I do think the Bears are going to have one of the best receiving cores in football. Man, I love the oh, combination so. of a Dunze, uh, DJ Moore, and then uh, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's been one of my favorite non Lions for a minute. Like, yeah, he's fantastic. nice. I'm talking about some sweet feet, especially for a big guy. That's a special package. Um, yep. But yeah, getting to our the Lions receiving core, man. Jameson has started really strong. Like, okay, so going back to the spring, uh, Dan Campbell uh, talked about, you know, he's a man on a mission and was talking about how different his approach was just to everything uh, this this spring. Because a couple of years ago, man, he came from Bama. And the thing with Jamo is I always tell people that aren't really following the Lions. He was at Ohio State. He was buried behind that crazy receiving like core, like where he just, yep. you know, they didn't give him much run. 
transfers to Bama, goes insane that one year in uh, in 2021, and then gets hurt very, you know, the national championship game. So 2022 is more of like just a redshirt season for JMO uh, and not really getting much work in. 2023, he the suspension thing happened. And one thing I always make it a point to bring up is uh, the Teddy Bridgewater signing last year. Uh, Jamison talks all the time about how much of a positive impact Teddy B was on him as a person, as a pro. Like, this is how you do things. This is how you go through this drill with purpose. This is how you, I thought that was awesome. Because now, you know, Teddy's down there in Miami coaching high school football. How cool would that be too? Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater's my coach. No big deal. Yeah, right. I think that's so (laughs) cool, man. Um, But yeah, I think, and then JMO has really, by all accounts, has carried that good play in the spring into the summer. Um, You know, big plays. And uh, he did have a tough practice yesterday. So Sunday, uh, August 11th, by all accounts, had some drops. But that's going to happen. And I do anticipate him bouncing back. His, there's just this aura around him, man. Like he does anything in practice. The fans go crazy. He feeds off of it. Uh, so, yeah, I do. I think JMO's going to have a, a big year in terms of – I don't know we're going to get into it here, but the volume, like there's other mouths to feed. But I think JMO could be one of those guys that – Whenever he touches the ball, big things happen. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big play waiting to happen. Kind of, I compare him to all the time is similar to Deshaun Jackson. Um, that's yeah. game most ceiling to me. Hopefully, hopefully he finds that in this offense. Um, you alluded to it, Morgan. There's a lot of mouths to feed, and we have the tight end position here for the Lions is a big part of it as well. And that's Mr. Sam Laporta. Absolutely, he was an absolute stud last year, finishing as the tight end overall in fantasy football. And right now. I don't know if you follow fantasy at all, Morgan, but he is being drafted ahead of Travis Kelsey, the Mark Andrews, all that, even in an offense with all the mouths to feed. Do you see him being able to replicate his 10 touchdown season that we saw last year? Or do you feel as though he can maybe take a little bit of a step back this year? Well, a good thing for fantasy owners, depending on what kind of league you play in, I don't see like his touchdown production could stay the same or go up, in my opinion, because he's so tough to deal with in the red zone, man. He's like 6'3", 250, and he moves like a a 215-pound X receiver. Like when I first saw him at the practice field last season, I was like, oh, my, like, what's this big white tight end from Iowa running, you know, moving like this? This doesn't make no sense to me. And and it, it just kept happening and kept happening. And we began to look at each other, and be like, "Yeah, he's gonna be pretty good, man. Like, this is this is gonna be pretty good." And sure enough, like, so I think that could stay the same. Um, his his targets, you know, volume might take a ding just because there are more mouths to feed. Like, I think Jameer is gonna get more touches on a week week to week basis. Yeah. So all of that factors in. Um, but I I don't think production because I they know what he can do. Uh, ben Johnson was a tight ends coach before he ascended to being the coordinator for the Lions. Dan Campbell is a former tight end and they love Sam, man. They, they motion Sam across the formation and like have him like ear holing ends on run concepts. Like he'll, he'll do it all. He's a good blocker. It's going to get better with technique, but the will is there and he's strong, deceptively strong too. When he, uh, when he gets those hands on your breastplate and can drive a little bit. So I don't think we'll really know until there's live bullets, you know, and it's like, we're seeing all the offense function with all those mouths to feed, but, you know, one thing JMO can do that I love for the case of like Sam Laporta and St. Brown is being able to stretch that field both vertically yeah. and horizontally, making more room f- like in the intermediate, like between the hashes, um, you know, for guys like St. Brown and, uh, and Laporta. So that's something I really think that could that could end up happening because he's just so good. Like and he's so comfortable in this offense and it's, it's only going to get easier, I hope, uh, in, in year two. Awesome. That's great to hear. Um, one more question, Morgan, before we get you out of here. And we are a fantasy focused channel. So I wanted to ask one fantasy particular question. And that is who is the player that is going to surprise people the most, good or bad, that fantasy football players need to know about? So this is a tough one because I was sitting here thinking about it for a while, like last night and this morning, because <laughs> everyone knows about St. Brown and Laporta, you're already talking about Laporta going yeah. really high. I assume St. Brown will, uh, Jameer and Montgomery, but I do think JMO could be a good like steal. And I'm, it depends on yeah. your league, but JMO, they're going to find ways to get him the ball, and that's what's it, like. He might not be the volume guys that Laporta and and uh, St. Brown are. Like he, a lot of the times, JMO will probably be the runoff route in the concept to mm-hmm. 
clear space or what have you. However, they showed last year, remember the NFC Championship game when they gave him that end around and he just zoomed like the roadrunner yeah. down the field. They're going to find ways to get him the ball, be it a handoff, be it a pop pass, you know, creative ways. Ben Johnson knows that's where I kind of allude to like good coaching is putting the putting your guys in spots that work right and they're going to work for them so even if jamo only gets four or five targets on a day hopefully he touches the ball seven or eight times and sure. i think he could be i think he could be a pretty good value pick just because and i, I want to say this too it's night and day like the amount of trust that Goff appears to have in him like from this right. time last year like going to him like there was a situational football the other day being played a couple practices ago and <laughs> You know, they were trying to get down the field, getting field goal position, and he hit J-Mo like a tough, like tight window. J-Mo made the catch, broke a tackle, got down, hurried, like telling the offense to hurry up so he can get on the ball and clock it. So mm. just night and day. And you can see J-Mo's put in the work and it's showing off. And I hope because I really like the kid like he he had a camp out here. I live on the uh, in Detroit on the east side and he had a camp uh, last year and him and his family, they're like just such good people and. For like, awesome. yeah, it's just one of those. I really want him to do well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely love to hear that. And JMO is someone I'm interested in and intrigued in. He's one of those guys you could just plug into your flex, man, because you you alluded to it. He's just got touchdown upside every time he touches the ball, and mm -hmm. hopefully we see hopefully we see that more this year. Um, but Morgan, great stuff, man. Before we get you out of here, I want to uh, let everyone know where they can find your work and what you got going on this season, man. For sure. Um, always at prideofdetroit.com. We are always Eric Schlitt and Jeremy Reisman, uh, the two like beat reporters for the site, um, are at practice every day um, in the room. And then we just have a ton of good contributors, myself and my, my good buddy Miko Scott are on the Pride of Detroit YouTube channel. Uh, the Pride of Detroit direct uh, newsletter is really an awesome thing. If you're really into the Lions and you want to be in the know for everything, Eric and Jeremy got you covered there. Um, check that on the website. But yeah, fun time to be a Lions fan. I'm 33 years old. Haven't been able to say that too many times and genuinely mean it in my life, but I certainly mean it now for sure. Love it, man. Make sure to check all Morgan's stuff out. Uh, does great work over there. Um, but yeah, that wraps up our Detroit Lions training camp check-in. Um, I'll be back later in the week on the YouTube channel. But until then, for Morgan, I'm Dylan. I'll talk at you next time.